what is going on everybody man we are back at it and i can say this is probably my least favorite time of year to be recording outside but hey it's the perfect time for bermuda grass renovation right <laughs> So we are going to get into this series. Um, if you've been following the channel for a little while, you've heard me talking about it. You've seen me put up some of the community posts of it, but um, we are going to take you through the process of my pops uh, front lawn renovation. And this is going to be episode one. Uh, and the thing about that is this uh, episode will go for warm season and cool season. So in general, if you're doing a renovation, uh, these three things that we're going to talk about in this video are things that you should take into consideration and should be the first things that you do in determining how to move forward with your renovation. All right, so before we get into tip number one, I wanna give a special thanks and shout out to our two sponsors that we've had for this project. And it's gonna be Simple Lawn Solution and also Ecologel and Hydrotain. So the thing is, those two companies have been supporting my channel, the reworking team for a number of years now. We love working with them. The products are great and they work. And also the team over there, they're just great to work with. So again, thank you for uh, supporting this project with my pops and you'll be seeing their products a little bit later on as we get a little further in this uh, series. So tip number one is going to be, uh, make sure that you're defining the scale of your project. That is gonna be important. Looking at my pops lawn, the full yard is an acre. There's no way that we were gonna be able to renovate a full acre. So yeah, the conversation was, pops, what are you most concerned with? What part do you want to look the best? And a lot of you have asked me, like, I've got a two acre lot or I've got an acre lot and I want to do a renovation or I want to start over. And a lot of times you just have to do those in sections. Um, so my papa really wanted uh, his front lawn to be his showpiece. So that's what we did. Now we can focus in on what we're going to need as far as equipment, uh, watering, uh, fertilization, and all of that. The next step was gonna be for us to figure out how big it was. Uh, so uh, you'll get out and we measured the lawn. You just do length times width. Uh, take out any of your uh, areas that are like your flower beds or anything like that. If you've got large areas that you need to detract from that, uh, large driveway areas, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, so we measured it out and we ended up being at about 20,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet. <laughs> I can say this is going to be the biggest renovation that I have ever done. But hey, y'all know me. I'm always up for the challenge and I'm always willing to learn and tackle something and find out and then bring it to y'all so y'all can see the good, the bad and the ugly. Hopefully it's more good than bad. When you're talking about scale of the project, one of the things that's really important is gonna be budget. Like how much do you have to actually spend on this project? Uh, so you gotta look at the cost of your water bill. That's one thing that people may not consider when they're doing a renovation. Watering is going to be key. Uh, the other thing is grass seed. If you're going down with cool season or if you're seeding a warm season variety, uh, the cost of your sprigs, the cost of uh, equipment rentals, uh, all of those things that need to be factored in when you're looking at the budget for your renovation. And during a renovation, you're going to have to have water. So water is going to be very critical and key. And a lot of times that's a limiting factor. If you do not have irrigation, you will have to come up with an above ground system that you'll need to put in uh, to be able to supply some water. And this is the same thing that I say for warm season or cool season, uh, whether you're doing grass seed or if you're doing sprigs uh, or if you're doing plugs, like however you do it during a renovation, water is going to be critical to the success. So that is an area that you do not want to limit or skip out on. What type of access to equipment do you have? Do you just have hand tools or are you able to get some equipment that you can help uh, speed up that process as in tractors, uh, ATVs, uh, things of that nature that can help speed up the process and actually limit some of the manual labor that you have to do. I can say I've done a number of renovations at this point, mostly cool season. This will be my first warm season, but as a general statement, 
Renovations are not easy. You do want to take into consideration uh, your physical capability. Um, and if you are doing a warm season renovation, as we are right now, uh, you definitely want to take into consideration the environmental conditions that you're going to be working in. I know we all want a nice, lush, lovely lawn, but we don't want to put our health at risk to be able to get there. Uh, if you're doing a warm season renovation, it is going to be during some of the hottest and most harsh times of the year. So definitely want to make sure that you take that in consideration as you're uh, figuring out the scale of your project. Next, we want to talk about choosing the right grass type. You want to make sure you're choosing the right grass type uh, for your lawn to make sure that you have the most successful renovation and also the longevity of that lawn. So uh, you have your warm season grass types and you have your cool season grass type. Warm season grass types are going to be better fitted for those warmer southern climates. Uh, and those grass types are gonna be uh, your Bermuda, your centipedes, St. Augustine, uh, zoysia. Those are warm season grass types. Then we go all the way up north um, for the northern climates, you're gonna have your cool season grass types. Uh, those are gonna be ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, your tall fescues, your fine fescues, uh, bent grass, which you don't really find very much in uh, home lawns. but those are gonna be your cool season grass types. Then you have the transition zone where North Carolina kind of falls where we're gonna be doing uh, this renovation. You can grow either one in the transition zone, warm season or cool season. But the thing is, which one is gonna be better suited for the location that you're gonna be putting it in from the environmental condition. North Carolina gets really hot in the summertime, really dry. Um, so it's going to need something to be more hardy because a lot of your cool season grass types, uh, they will survive it. They will be able to do it, but it's going to take a lot more input from us to make sure that lawn survives through those harsher times during the summer. Whereas if we went with the Bermuda, which we're doing, the Bermuda is going to love the heat. Um, and the Bermuda that we've chosen is going to be more cold tolerant. So hey, it may not even go dormant very long during the winter and we don't have to look at a brown lawn very long during those cold periods of the year. So uh, make sure you're looking at those environmental conditions, looking at your sun exposure, looking at your, your microclimates. Do you have shade? Um, a lot of your warm season grass types are not a fan of shade. So if you've got a lot of shade and you've got to grow a warm season grass type, you're probably going to have to look at trying to eliminate some of that shade. The warm season grass types definitely like more uh, sun than shade. Uh, a lot of your cool season grass types are a little more uh, shade tolerant, uh, especially your tall fescues, your fine fescues. Uh, they've kind of uh, genetically been grown in a lot of the newer cultivars to be a little more shade tolerant. So. Uh, those are some of the inputs that you want to look at uh, when you're choosing the right grass type. You also want to be able to look at your long term uh, maintenance of this lawn. How often can you get out and mow? How much do you have budgeted for water? How much do you have budgeted for fungicide applications uh, if you're dealing with a cool season? Uh, a lot of times if you bring those cool season lawns down into the transition zone and those warmer climates down south, they're gonna need a lot more fungicide applications to kind of get them through those harsh periods of time. Whereas if you go with a warm season grass type in those situations, they're gonna be less prone to having to need a lot of those fungicide applications. So uh, make sure that you're taking into consideration uh, those long-term uh, budgeting factors that you need to look at uh, in determining the right grass type for your lawn. So in starting a renovation, this is going to be a critical one uh, in getting things prepared. And that's going to be taking a soil test. Uh, so uh, when you take a soil test prior to starting a renovation, one of the key things is going to be that you're looking for is your pH. 
So going in, knowing what your pH is, you can make some adjustments to that uh, prior to actually starting the renovation. So for my pop salon, we pulled that soil test and found out uh, that the pH was really low. Uh, we kind of had an idea that was gonna be the case, uh, but the soil test was able to confirm that. So uh, we definitely needed to bring the pH up. pH is going to dictate what nutrients are available to the plant. Uh, so as you get within that seven to six uh, range, you start to get into kind of the optimal range for uh, pH where a lot of the nutrients uh, are available to the plant. So that's the range that we want to start to get in uh, somewhere between six and seven. And then uh, you can optimize from there if you need to. Being that it was low, we needed to go down with lime. So if you pull your soil test and you end up with a higher pH, you will need to go down with some elemental sulfur, uh, depending on how high it is, um, or there's some more advanced strategies that you may need to get into, which I won't discuss here. Uh, but that's the simple uh, gist of high pH, you're gonna need some sulfur to try to help bring that down. Low pH, uh, you're gonna need to bring that up with some lime. So as we get in and talk about lime, uh, you've got two different options. You're gonna have dolomitic and calcitic lime. The difference between dolomitic and calcitic lime is uh, the magnesium carbonate portion of it. Uh, working with dolomitic lime, you'll have calcium and uh, magnesium carbonate in there. Uh, you will primarily get uh, just calcium carbonate with uh, just a calcitic lime. So looking at your soil test, if you need some magnesium or your uh, magnesium and calcium levels are off, you may need to go in with a dolomitic lime. We went down with about a thousand pounds of lime. Uh, yeah, that's right. We've put a thousand pounds of pelletized lime down on the lawn and that is to start bringing that pH up. pH takes time for it to uh, work through the soil and actually start to change that pH of the soil. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're getting this down as early as possible. And a lot of times this is good to do during a renovation is because you can incorporate either sulfur or the uh, lime that you need to put down. You can incorporate it into the soil as you're doing your renovation. But make sure you're checking that pH and uh, you're getting down the right correction that you need to make sure that you're getting the most utilization uh, of those nutrients that are currently in your soil. We're now into July uh, and it is time for us to get going, especially if you're doing a cool season renovation. Uh, if you're doing a cool season renovation, make sure you're getting your grass seed together, your irrigation supplies, uh, all of those things, and you're considering what we talked about in this video. Uh, so this is going to be a series. I'm gonna take you from start to finish. Uh, this was just the beginning of this series. So uh, make sure you tune into the next episodes and they'll be linked in here as they start to come out. Hit that subscribe and notification button uh, so you'll be notified when the rest of this series is posted. And hey, as I always say, just know we work. <laughs>